Hey, where are you going? Champ? Slugger? Hey, cowboy! Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going out! Hey, everybody. Caleb here driving through downtown Montgomery. And one thing that you'll notice as you go through downtown, the closer that you get to the middle of town, really in Montgomery or any area, is that the closer you get to there and the more people you're around, the more traffic lights you see. Now, traffic lights are annoying to me for a number of reasons. First of all, I'm a country boy that just likes driving down country roads. And another one that's really obnoxious is that my air conditioner only works when it's above about 35 miles per hour. So <laughs> starting and stopping is really annoying for me because I get really hot in my truck. But besides all that, I'm not here to bash traffic lights. I understand that we need traffic lights. I understand that they are a necessity. And one of the reasons that we do need traffic lights is because there are lots of people trying to go in different directions, all with different goals and destinations. And what traffic lights do is they help regulate that. They help tell people exactly where they need to go, why they need to go there. They keep us from getting in one another's way, which is a really, really good thing. Because we wouldn't want to be crashing into one another just because we have different destinations through no malice or fault of anybody's. If we didn't have traffic lights or some kind of system like a four-way stop, we would be constantly running into each other even though we don't mean to. And I think that that is reflective of an actual political truth. Because you may notice, if you've ever looked at a map of the Electoral College, that the vast majority of the people that vote Republican live in rural areas. Even in deep blue states like New York, California, Massachusetts, you'll notice that any of the rural areas, the counties that don't have major metropolitan areas, that all of those areas tended to vote for Republicans. And most of your metropolitan areas, places with big population centers, that those places tended to, on average, vote for Democrats. Now, why is that? I think there's actually a very simple solution. You see, the reason for that is, usually, the Republican Party tends to be the party that is the party of, hey, leave me alone. Stay out of my hair, I'll stay out of yours. Typically, the Democrat Party is the exact opposite. They want to control and regulate everything. They want to inhibit freedom to keep people from doing bad things, normally speaking. Now, of course, I'm using very broad generalities here, but as a general rule, that is something that is true. And you can understand why that message would appeal more to somebody living in a city versus somebody that lives out in the country. If you are somebody that for example, looks at gun control and sees even the average citizen having a gun as being dangerous, well, that can be something that would very quickly resonate with you. Because if you are constantly packed around people, you could see how somebody having a gun, even through no malice of their own, might accidentally shoot somebody. Now, the odds of that actually happening are very small, but you understand why that argument would appeal to somebody that lives in a place where there's lots of people constantly surrounding them all the time. And if you're somebody whose nearest neighbor is a mile or two miles away from you, that argument doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you. You don't see the reason why that regulation would be necessary. Now, on its surface, it does make sense that there are some rules and some laws and some regulations, like having more traffic lights, like having noise pollution laws, that kind of thing, that just make more sense when you're in an urban environment, there are certain extra precautions that need to be taken when there's lots of people around, but it does speak to an actual political truth. And that truth is, the closer you are to more people, the less freedom you are going to have. That tends to be the case. Whether good or bad, whether you agree with it or not, that typically tends to be the way that it is because we would naturally, as human beings, tend to get in each other's way more if we are around one another more often. That on its surface, I think usually leads to some bad policy in urban environments. But overall, on its face, I don't think that's necessarily always a bad thing. What is bad is when people in major population centers, major cities, try to enforce those rules and enforce those lifestyles that make absolutely no sense onto people living out in rural areas where those rules don't make any sense. And by the way, even though this happens less often, 
I think it would be just as wrong for people in rural environments to try to put a bunch of rules and regulations on people in urban centers that don't make any sense either. And so I think that overall, we need to understand this principle of local governance typically being the best one, because that helps us stay out of each other's way. And that's how to preserve liberty. A recent survey showed that the average American spends, I kid you not, eight seconds reading a news story before either commenting on it or sharing it. That means that most people are barely finishing the headline before spouting out an opinion on content they didn't actually watch or read. Therefore, if you are watching this and made it to the end of this video, congratulations. You are, as Bernie Sanders would say, the 1%. So now it's totally appropriate to like and subscribe.